Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I'm back with another Fate Grand Order video. Today, I'm going to be going over the Fate Requiem event that's coming up uh, in three days, I think. It's the right now, when I'm recording this, it is almost the fourth? No, it's the third right now. So yeah, three days. Or is it two days? Because maintenance and stuff like that. I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to be going over it. That's going to be today's video. Let's go. So this one is a collab event with Fate Requiem. If you're asking what's Fate Requiem, it's a series of books that I don't think got ever translated over here. And there's only like three of them in the Fate universe. Um, this is the series that finally confirmed that servants can get pregnant after everyone was wondering. I guess is wondering the right word for it. Yeah, sure, let's go with that. As there many people were wondering if they could, and this one reveals that they can. So that's what its biggest claim to fame is, as far as I'm concerned. And its second is this event right here. So the prologue for the event is board games will suddenly become all the rage in Caldea. While everyone is absorbed in their entertainment, many of the Caldea's servants begin disappearing. Meanwhile, a mysterious young boy appears before Master and leads them into another world where the missing servants can be supposedly be found. Master and party find themselves in the street of Akihabara, somewhat different from the one they know. The mysterious young boy declares she's supposed to be here somewhere. And this is basically like a board game. Uh, how to progress is you clear a variety of board games to unlock quests, free quests, get dice through battle drops, play a board game using dice. You can see here it's like literally a board game. Main quest, unlock a specific time and dates once you gather enough tokens. Bonus quest, unlock by gathering certain amounts or combinations of tokens, collect even items. And then when you do enough of them and you advance the story, you unlock a new board game and you can play on that one. I don't know much more about it than that really, uh, because I usually don't. I didn't, I didn't play this one on JP when I had it, so it's going to be fun to kind of look around. I like board games, so sure, why not? Uh, and now we'll go into this side right here. So yes, this is when it should be starting on the 6th. This is the current pre-release campaign going on. If you log in now, you'll get a bunch of golden apples. Um, a one half AP campaign going on. Gather embers. My room background. Fancy new one. Limited time campaign. Double friend bonus for these units. Uh, there you go. Nothing too mind-blowing, of course. I think there's also a current summoning campaign that you can summon on if you want. If you want Great Statue God or Sakabahime, Thomas Edison or Nursery Rhyme. <laughs> the, again, the weirdest combination of servants put together in the world. Uh, but usually not once they get their own separate banners. So if you absolutely want to love one of them and you don't give a crap about Castoria coming out, then I say, hey, go for the fences and go for broke, my friend. That's what I say to you. Next, the actual event itself. Here's the Fate Requiem. This is the board game. I'm looking at the JP side of the game. So this is should how it should be go. So we should have prologue and second game. And then third and fourth game will unlock. And then fifth and final game. And then finally the epilogue. And it seems like it's metered out by two two days. So yeah, so we should get it on... Let's see, this, this one starts at the six. On the 8th, we should get this. On the 10th, we should get this. And on the 11th, we should get the epilogue. And then goes out until the rest of the day. Now for the actual units themselves. The free unit is Ris. I think that's how you say her name. Or it's E. Rice. Utsumi Eat Rice. There we go. Perfect pronunciation. Feel free to tell me how it's actually pronounced if you want. Increases own arts performance for 3 turns. Grants self evasion for 2 attacks 3 turns. At level 10, it's 30% arts up. Second skill, Defrescence, Imitation B, ignores evasion for one turn, increases on crit star absorption for one turn, 600% absorption on it. Third skill, Grim Reaper B, increases on insta-kill success rate for three turns, increases on crit damage for three turns, increases on damage against servants for three turns, 100% death rate at level 10, 30% crit damage, and 30% servant damage. I believe her art is t uh, two arts, two quicks, one buster, and then arts and P, I think, anyway. Her passive skills are magic resistance spirit B+, plus, increases on debuff resistance by 10%, further increased on debuff resistance against undead enemies by 20%, writing C+, plus, independent action B, and divinity E. Yes, she was, in fact, an arts. Uh, and her thing here is anti-army, deals damage to all enemies, removes their defensive buffs, and yeah, chance to insta-kill them. This unit, uh, 
three hits too as well. Um, this ability here that removes debuff skills is very nice because as you can see, eventually we will get the anti-purge defense, which is an advanced form of the invincibility, which can only be removed if they remove defensive buffs because they can't be taken off any other way. They can't be hit by um, piercing damage at all. So having a unit with this is nice for a specific niche if you're ever in a challenge quest. Other than that, there's a lot of arts, lancers, AoE style units. There's actually a buttload of them. There's actually a buttload of arts lancers at the same time as well. So, and this one has an insta-kill, and this is a personal thing for me. I hate all insta-kill units. I think they're the most useless units in the entire game. Except for very specific off chance or I guess you're trying to gloat or something. I think the only one that isn't is the Assassin Shiki from the uh, Garden... Is it the Garden of Madness? No, that's the thing from No More Heroes. Garden of Evils. Garden of Sinners. Boom. Got it. I think she's the best one uh, obviously and maybe this one will be alright. It's such a specific niche where she's like I guess wants to fight servants and the death rate is up. I don't know but what I do know is that she looks very cute. And that's enough for most people, so hey, I see where you're looking when I click on this. So feel free to make your own decisions as a grown person, aka Grim Reaper. So next we have Voyager, Little Prince Pren, Voyager 1. If you're, answer if you're asking the question, yes, is in fact the Voyager probe turned into a little boy. And if you're asking how does this happen, I have no idea. We have a servant that is that was made out of udon rice in an alternate reality so the fact that the voyager probe was somehow able to turn into a tiny boy is not the weirdest thing that i could have mentioned right there so his active skills are voyagers of the star a charges on np gauge grants self debuff immunity for three turns and gains 10 crit stars at level 10 it's 50 percent np up very good. Second skill, Swing BBA, grants self-evasion for one turn, increases on quick performance for three turns, reduces one enemy quick resistance for three turns, 20% quick, and then quick resistance is 20% down, three turns, of course, as I said. Protection of the world's end, Cosmos B, increases one ally's critical star absorption for one turn, increases the party's crit damage for three turns, increases the party's crit attack chance resistance by three turns, 600% absorption, Crit damage is 30%, crit resistance is 20%. Passive skills, existence outside of the domain C, gains 2 crit stars per turn, increases on debuff resistance by 6%. Independent navigation A, increases own crit damage by 8%, increases own arts performance by 8%, and contact with civilization D, increases own buff removal resistance by 10%. All, I think, usual, I think these are all unique to him. I can't really think of anyone who would have these skills besides him. Anyway, Noble Phantasm, Pale Blue Dot, oh, fantastic, five hits per hit, deals damage to all enemies, deals 150% extra damage to sky attributes, charges parties NP gauge by 20%, further charges the NP gauge of living human allies by 10%, and increases his own MP damage for one turn, 20%. He is, at this point in NA, I believe he replaces Dantes as the best um, farmer for quick. Uh, because he's he's just dumb <laughs> the way he's well he doesn't have uh, NP gain which is the one thing that usually holds back most quick um, AOE units from looping is they don't they don't have very good quick um, they don't have very good um, NP gain on their stuff but he has plenty of hits but besides the plenty of hits his NP charges the party's NP gauge by 20% so the burden of anything is that you need to at least get 30% of anything. Um, and that should be enough of what he's doing, especially if you're going to get Sky Attribute dudes. That should be plenty to get what you need. He also has this. Most quick also, for some reason, don't have this ability where it charges his own NP gauge and stuff like that. So having that and the Evan at B50 is big. It's huge for him. Uh, Dantes, for example, very good, but he doesn't have a NP gauge increaser, he just has NP gen generation, which is perfectly fine because it ends up working fine for him because he does, he hits plenty of hits on his NP, so it ends up working out a little bit more. But obviously if he actually had the ability to increase his um, uh, NP stuff, it would be very helpful with a lot of builds for sure. Uh, 
but yeah, that combined with everything that he's doing makes him... And he's also, I think, two quick cards. I think the only thing that's a bummer is that it probably should be three. If he had three, he'd be perfect. Because he'd just be the, one of the quickest boys out in the world. But without that, he's still fantastic. Still great. Um, I'm going to be pulling for him. <laughs> Besides the fact that he's a quick unit, I also kind of like the dude. I think the one negative that you can have for him, which I think is very fair, is that he requires Comet Shards on Ascension and on skill of reinforcements and eggs this most people here's the one here's the one thing that will probably stop me from summoning too much is that he's too expensive 10 comet shards 15 for skills so i think with three that's 45 55 comet shards 45 of these eggs and castoria is coming around and she needs both of those units as well um it makes it so that you have to be doing some insane grinding because these are all new material. And to be fair, this can be applied to a lot of newer units and I think it's something that you should bear witness, especially with what's coming up in the future. Um, it is at least nice to take note whether or not they're a pain in the ass to farm and this guy's a pain in the ass to farm, in my opinion. So that's the one big negative I have for him. But other than that, perfectly fine builds. If you're going to be going for Voyager, then you're going to be pretty happy with what he is, unless you hate Quick, in which case, why are you... I guess you must really love Voyager, <laughs> I guess is my answer to that. Anyway, the last and most important unit in the entire banner, Kyo, Kyo, aka Dinosaur Mama. It's a fucking dinosaur. No questions needed, don't care of a shit what she does, it's a fucking dinosaur, let's go. Thank you very much, everyone, for watching the video. <laughs> if you liked it, feel free to leave a like. Tell me down below what you're planning for this event, if you're going to be summoning at all. I'm going to try and do some summons. I should have a summon video, which is going to be the the first in a very long-ass time. Just because I've been saving for Castoria like a madman, and I, I don't have, like, crazy flush of YouTuber cash to just spend on Fago. So, compared to all the other things I have to spend for. But I digress. Um, yeah. That's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out. Have a good night. Bye-bye.